Hello and welcome everyone to another video from November Zero. Golf India Yankee Quentin in Houston. And today I wanted to talk more about GMRS and a little bit about why GMRS is so special. And you wouldn't think that it'd be so special because we've only got 22 channels. And from there, it's actually split up even more. These first eight channels, I'm sorry, if you can hear my cat scratching at the door. These first seven channels, they're all limited to five watts. Then uh, this next set of channels, eight through 14, you're, you're limited to half a watt, even on GMRS. So it's these last couple channels that are special where we're allowed to use 50 watts. And when you first get into the hobby, it's really exciting to think about watts and wattage because uh, those walkie-talkies you'll see, the we call them FRS radios, the bubble pack radios, basically anything you find at Walmart for the most part. Although if you want to get technical, Walmart actually uses MERS <laughs> radios in their stores. But uh, as far as what they sell to the general public, they're what are known as family radios. And that's part of the family radio service. And you'll actually see that the FRS, they're, they're identical. They use all these same 22 channels. But the difference is, is that FRS radios tend to only put out half a watt, period. So I suppose for compatibility with the family radio service, uh, GMRS radios also are required... <laughs> I'm afraid of bugs. There's a bug flying around. But it's a mosquito hawk. It can't hurt me, I don't think. So, yeah, I think it's for compatibility with FRS. So, yeah, if you're putting out 50 watts, you're totally going to overpower someone with half a watt. So, if you've only got half a watt, stick to channels 8 through 14. But, yeah, today we're going to be talking about the magic of repeaters and why peter repeaters are important why they kind of make GMRS kind of magic. And, uh, and just some other interesting things to point out is that these first eight, seven channels, you know, they're, they're 462. They're all interstitial. So 462, 562, that's only a little bit off of 462, 55. So, I mean, these channels are all really close to to each other. We don't actually have that many channels. I wish there was a uh, GMRS radio relay league and that we could, uh, you know, lobby the government for more channels because we could definitely use them. And if you look at this, channels 8 through 14, those half watt, those are all 4, 6, 7. And so you'll notice that those are all uh, these, these first seven channels and these next seven channels. Uh, they're all inner. They're all interstitial to the uh, the repeater channels, but also the second set of seven. They're all offset by five megahertz. So you have four six two five six two five, four six seven five six two five, four six two five eight seven five, four six seven five eight seven five, and and so on and so forth. So yeah, you've got these these first seven channels and these second seven channels which are just offset by five megahertz. And then you've got this uh, last set here, these repeater channels, 15 through 22. But uh, if you look at the repeater channels and frequencies, the way that repeaters work is they have RX frequencies and they have TX frequencies, receive and transmit. So you will be listening for repeaters on 46255, but you'll transmit to the repeater and the repeater will be listening on 46755. And that's, for example, channel 15. So for GMRS, we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 repeater channels with a maximum output power of 50 watts. And uh, so you might be saying, so what? You know, what? why does that matter? One of the big reasons to do with why that's so important is actually the way... Well, you have to first believe that the Earth is curved. So, <coughs> oh, 
the curvature of the Earth is actually what makes GMRS operate the way that it does. Because GMRS is actually UHF, whereas, uh, I gotta let my cat in here. Come on in, TV baby. Come on in. Come on, baby. All right. So UHF frequencies, they follow line of sight. So a lot of the times, the amount of power output isn't actually as consequential as it would be if we were trying to reflect it off the atmosphere and send it across the planet. It's not going across the planet. It's going to penetrate through the atmosphere, and it's going to travel out to space. But um, So your height of observation, your, you know, from the average person, let's say you're holding it at uh, your head, Maybe let's say that's five feet. Calculate the distance. Distance to the horizon, that's about 2.7 miles. And of course, that's the radius. So with a HT or a handy talkie, a little walkie talkie, if you're five feet, or let's, let's be generous, let's say you're six feet tall and you've got really long arms and you've got a really long antenna and that gets it up to 10 feet, you know, because the tip of the, the antenna and all that stuff 3.9 miles. So it doesn't matter how tall you are, you're still only going to get up 3.9 miles before the the Earth itself curves. Let me... I'm talking with my hands here. Curves. So your, your RF signal goes in a straight line like this, off into space, and the Earth just curves. <coughs> and... Uh, why VHF and HF are so important and so different is because they actually have a chance to reflect off of the the ionosphere. They're ionized part or uh, particles, or I don't know how all that science stuff works. There's there's smarter people out there, <laughs> but just for reference today, repeaters are important because there's a let's let's bump it up to two hundred feet. 17.3 miles. Now suddenly it's starting to look a lot more usable. And remember that it's a radius of 17.3 miles. So from the center to the periphery. And that means that, uh, let's say if you're looking at the circle on here on the screen, let me go back. If you're looking at the circle and your H and the repeater is C, you could be 17.3 miles away, and as long as there is a line of sight between you and the repeater, and, and not too much you know, stuff in the way, because uh, UHF is really good at penetrating through foliage, trees, obstacles such as power lines, buildings, but you know there is a limit, and there's certain types of trees that are harder to penetrate than others. Pine trees, for example, I believe, because they're so dense. <laughs> Again, I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's just stuff I've heard on the radio. I have no idea if it's true. But uh, so 200 feet, it's kind of um, the um, average hobbyist <laughs> tower, at least in Texas that I know of. And that's because uh, anywhere between, uh, anywhere more than 200 feet, you are not subject to uh, marking requirements by the Federal Aviation Association. But... That might be out out of date. So between 50 and 200 feet, you have to mark the towers. I don't know if that means like active lighting. But yeah, in general, what I've heard is that uh, we're allowed to have up to 200 feet before we have to start lighting it up. And uh, this journal Aviation News is like five years ago. So I don't, I don't keep up to date on that. I'm not in the market to set up a tower. But uh, yeah, if you're going to set up a tower, make sure to look up the FAA regulations and consider, you know, how difficult will it be for you to follow those? Because uh, last I heard, over 200 feet, you have to have lighting and, and you, that's just, it's just a lot of extra work. But yeah, there are some towers out there that will be much higher than 200 feet. Like uh, there's one I know of that's 750. And that brings it up to 33.6 miles. And again, remember, that's just from the center out to the radius. So you're really looking at like 66 miles. And and that's that right there is the beauty of repeaters and what makes them so incredible and so uh, amazing. 
And fortunately, uh, where I live in Houston, it's very flat. But once you start bringing in mountains and uh, other things into the, the equation, it gets a lot more complicated. Again, because their line of sight, you know, radios aren't able to penetrate the mountain. But if you have a repeater on the mountain, you can repeat the signal. And this is just a really simple diagram. It's, it's taking your signal and it's repeating it. But it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. You'll see because you have two frequencies, you have a transmitter and a receiver. And again, they're offset, so you'll have two different frequencies. And for GMRS, remember, the lower of the two is the RX frequency. That's the one you're listening to. And then you have the, the TX frequency. That's the higher one in this case. And that's the one you're transmitting on. And you're allowed up to 50 watts. And there's a lot of really great radios out there that you can buy that are 50 watts. And uh, a resource that I really liked, this is from the Southwest Community Radio System. And there's some really nice people out there, specifically to uh, Darren out of Tucson. He sent me a, a QSL card quite a while ago. There's a great group of people out there if you're in New Mexico or Arizona. But yeah, he put this out here. And uh, he's got a list of repeater-capable GMRS radios. What I really like about this is that You've got consumer end radios. You know they're ready to go out of the box. No, no additional programming typically. They're so they're super easy, and they're they're pretty cheap. You know, brand new. And I don't know how up to date this is, but you've got these ocean radios. These are very popular. Uh, it's spelled like Wuxan, but uh, I've heard it pronounced Ocean, or Ocean, Baofeng, Btech, uh, Midland. So yeah, these are a lot of brands we're familiar with. But ultimately, they're all made in China, for better or worse. And uh, that's why I also recommend, if you can, if you go to ham fests, look for commercial surplus radios, such as the Kenwood TK880. I've got two of these. I've also got a TK8180. But you do have to be careful and because uh, there's different power levels. There's different frequency areas that they cover. So you have to make sure that you get one that is the... Uh, the right bandwidth. So you might find a TK880, but for example, you have to make sure that it's for uh, for compatible with GMRS. And uh, just for more context, a lot of people kind of get confused because you've got these these channels and you've got these these radios and these are commercial radios, right? So why are there why am I saying that you can use GMRS radios? And that just goes um, I'm sorry, commercial radios on GMRS. And that kind of goes to the history of the business band and where GMRS came from, which um, in the past, a lot of people, you know, we'd use uh, Citizens Band or CB, FRS, those bubble, bubble pack radios. But uh, there was a lot of um, services that are available to to private entities, such as, you know, businesses, corporations, uh, government entities, nonprofits, and so you can rather than you know using like a public service like CB, which is going to be all kinds of craziness on, which I'm sure some listeners already know about the craziness of CB, but um, you've got these special protected bands, and you can sell these specialized radios. For example, Walmart and MERS, they're two watts, and they've got uh, only a couple channels. But see, one of those, uh, you've got blue dot and green dot. So now they're multi-use radios, but previously they were green dot radios. And that was a way to help them distinguish. You know, like we'll give team A the green dot radios, team B will get the blue dot radios, and, and so on and so forth. And so a lot of that stuff, you know, they're, they're licensed for a long time, or maybe even lifetime, I don't know. But uh, I'm not an expert on commercial radios, but basically we, we have the same thing on UHF. Look at that, GMRS. So a lot of these radios, maybe they just had a, um, maybe they were bought and sold as, you know, business radios. And uh, maybe there was, you know, hundreds of little walkie talkies with a little white dot on them. And maybe those got thrown away, but you'll find hundreds of these Kenwood TK880s and where to go. And uh, other commercial built, and uh, they're very affordable. A lot of times you'll you'll have like a 
a bus company will rip out like a hundred of them and you know they'll just try to recoup a little bit of money for it a lot of times the cables will be cut you'll have to <laughs> redo your own connections you'll have to get your own power supply you'll be very lucky if you if it comes with an antenna or a mic you know so you're gonna have to do some setup and research and uh you'll be very lucky if you get a bracket for it but you know there you go there's they're very affordable and they're hardcore Man, they cannot, they will not die. These radios are built to last forever. All these uh, were made in Japan. Kenwood Vertex, which uh, owns Yesu, uh, and Motorola. Icom, Ritron's the only one I don't know, but these other ones, those are all Japanese. Uh, Motorola, I don't know where they manufacture, but very high quality stuff. And they recently bought Vertex, but let's not go into that. So yeah, just summarized here. There's not many GMRS channels, so when you're buying GMRS equipment, just keep in mind that, you know, we want more channels. So if you're buying a radio that can't accept your the ability to program more channels, you know, be a little wary of buying those, because there's, there's a lot of consumer radios out there where they just, you know, churn them out, and uh, if the laws ever change, I don't think you'll ever see a firmware update. So what's nice about these commercial radios is they're a good value, and you can reprogram the channels in there, and you know you can be responsible for making sure that these are programmed correctly. But you know, for the the vast general of uh, non non uh, hobbyists, yeah, just stick to the consumer radios. There's some really good options out there. The repeaters are what you need to look for. They're what takes your your tiny little two three mile radius and gets you out 60 miles sometimes because remember your h c is center of the repeater there could be someone all the way on the other side of the radius of that repeater so yeah we get some radios let me know if there's any any help you need uh i'm n0 giy you can email me or you can find me on the radio lots of different ways to find me but i love to help so leave questions or comments below and i'll get back to you and zero GIY will go clear for this evening and seven three. Bye bye.